Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new video. So I've been getting asked a ton of questions uh, about the new WRX that just kind of debuted a few days ago, actually last week. Um, I've been getting so many DMs about, you know, my thoughts, what I think of it. Uh, is it terrible? Is it great? Are you going to get one? I can't even tell you how many questions I got, which is actually very humbling uh, to actually think that people want to hear my opinion. Uh, so instead of answering all the DMs and all the questions, I figured I would just make a video going over my thoughts, what I think, what I'm going to do. So if anybody has any further questions about it, I can kind of just direct them to this video. You know, I'm not somebody that's going to sit here and say, look at the stats. I'm not going to riddle off a whole bunch of different numbers and everything. All that information is out there. A ton of people have already done videos on it, explaining all that information. Um, I'm personally just going to go over my thoughts and kind of what I think the future holds for Subaru and kind of for me with Subaru as well. Um, and then we'll go from there. Anytime a new car comes out, whether it's a Subaru, a BMW, anything. Every single person jumps on the bandwagon basically saying it looks terrible. The previous generation looks better. Please go back. Why are you doing this? It looks awful. I can't even tell you how many generations of cars that that has happened to. Even with the VA chassis, everybody absolutely hated this chassis. They thought it looked like a Toyota Corolla or a Camry. Um, it's, it's, it happens every single time. So when I see all those comments and people saying they hate it and it looks terrible, I kind of just laugh at it mainly because everybody hates change. Everybody likes what they already know. So anything different, people start to freak out. People start to say it looks terrible and they really start attacking the brand. Like, you know, I, it gets a little ridiculous. And then for me personally, I usually like to wait it out a little bit. I like to wait out and see the car in person, get a feel for it. You know, the, the debut pictures and videos and stuff, to me, they always seem so cheesy. They always seem so overproduced and just they try way too hard, not just with WRXs or, or STIs, um, just any car in general. They try to sell the car so hard with these crazy over cinematic, you know, videos and pictures and everything. You know, I just really want to see the car in the flesh of what I personally think, because honestly, seeing a car in person and then seeing a car on video or picture is entirely different. Even with my car, um, you know, you guys see it on video all the time and pictures on Instagram. You know, it, it looks great on pictures and stuff, but when you see it in person, it's a totally different experience. That is a lot of things people mentioned to me when they actually saw my car in person, that it looks so, you know, so much better in person than it does on camera and videos. Um, so it's kind of the same thing here. I encourage everybody to go find one, see it in person, check it out, uh, and then go from there. You know, people just love drama. People just love jumping on the bandwagon and just saying it looks terrible and, you know, ah, this is the worst thing in the world. Why would you do this? So this is how we're going to go about it, at least my opinion and how I'm going to explain it. Um, I'm not going to say it's bad. I'm not going to say it's terrible. Everybody has their own opinions on it. The one thing I do have to say about it is it, they just really needed a big, big change. And what I mean by that is, you know, just the overall looks and you know, the motor and everything. They just needed a, a really drastic change just to kind of bring people back uh, to Subaru and, the, and the, you know, the heritage of the WRX and the STI. I know the STI hasn't been out yet, but um, you know, it's, they really needed a big change. Now, when they went from the GR chassis to this one, it was pretty massive. Granted, it was the same motor. Um, the overall styling, I mean, the car was, was completely different in terms of the overall looks, totally different. It doesn't look anything like the previous generation in my eyes. There's a few things around the car that, you know, kind of hints towards the older generations. Uh, but honestly, this car is totally different. And I think that's really what they should have done with this generation or the new generation. Um, to me, it looks way too similar to this one. It almost looks like a refresh of this. Uh, you know, I know that's the direction that they're going with the Outback and the Legacy and that's their whole lineup. Basically, that's kind of the look they're going for. Uh, but for their flagship car, you know, for their sports car, their ha racing heritage car, something that means so much to enthusiasts, uh, I really, really wish they spent, uh, you know, a little bit more time kind of listening to the enthusiasts, listening to the people and, and, and you know, really grasping what we really wanted. Yes, there is a new motor in it. Yes, there is huge, huge potential for that motor. Now with the STI, obviously we don't know anything about it yet. Um, I'll go over that a little bit later, but the FA 2.4 motor that's in the WRX and that is ultimately going to be in the STI as well. 
Um, that has huge tuning potential. I think it's going to be a, a pretty fun car in terms of modifying. You know, it's, it's direct injection, it's a brand new motor. Uh, I think uh, tuners and, and aftermarket companies are gonna have an absolute field day with it. I think it's really going to update Subaru and kind of bring them back to, you know, current year, current era about, you know, not having to do so much uh, to bring the car's power up a lot, you know, doing minimal mods, you know, two grand with a tune downpipe and, you know, an intake or something like that. And you can gain like a hundred horsepower, something simple like that, like something you would get from a, a Golf R or something like that. You know, you don't really need to do much to gain a lot of power. So I'm kind of hoping that is what's going to happen with the, the new uh, FA24. Uh, but in, the, in terms of overall looks, I just really, really, really wish, um, you know, they spent a little bit more time just kind of redesigning everything. To me, it's a little too soft. It's a little too, I don't know. Uh, it looks like they're catering more towards sale than actual enthusiasts. Uh, you know, with the with the plastic fenders, personally, I think there is just way, way too much plastic on the car. Um, obviously, the, the oversized fenders that they call it are just, uh, that is not the way and not what we all wanted. <laughs> and with the rear bumper, if you guys have actually seen, uh, you know, an actual different shot of the rear bumper, kind of looking down at it, yeah, it's pretty questionable. Um, you know, there's a lot of plastic back there. Honestly, if they got rid of all the plastics and they painted it at least and they let it rework the rear end, I think it would be a much better looking car. Now with the interior, yes, everybody has been craving for a new interior. They're always looking for, you know, newer, better with great tech, um, a lot of options and everything. And, um, you know, to me, that giant screen, I am not a fan of that in the Outback. And I guess they have it in the Legacy as well. And it's obviously going to be through the entire lineup. Uh, I'm just not a big fan of it either. It, it, it just looks too gimmicky. You know, I don't, something about a, um, a sports car or something like this, I'm not really in it for, you know, the tech. Um, obviously it's nice to have amenities and everything, but, you know, doing something so over the top, um, you know, trying to fit in with the rest of the crowd and do something a little bit different, uh, it just doesn't really work. I think it's a little too obnoxious. And plus, if you look at the base model, you know, you don't get the full screen. You actually get two screens, like a doubled in, um, and there's just a lot of plastic around it. It looks super, super cheap in my eyes. I don't know. It just doesn't fit the car it doesn't fit the brand it just it looks something needs to be done about that and um you know it's gonna be really curious to see what aftermarket companies do with that whole section because i'm sure a lot of people are going to want to upgrade that um obviously stereos and everything and head units that is a very uh, common thing that people like to do in cars um so that should be interesting but i'm not really a big fan of it now there's two trim levels. There's uh, the GT, which is basically, you know, the fully loaded version. You get the Recaros in it, but it only comes in automatic. Uh, that stung a little bit. You know, I'm not really sure why they did that. Um, you know, I can't imagine the CVT sales of the WRX were really that great that they thought it was a good idea for that trim level to be automatic only. Um, I just, there's a, there's a lot of questionable things. You know, and the thing about this car is they just had so much time to be able to design it, to really, really wow, you know, the community and, and really, really, you know, take Subaru and, and the WX and STI into a new direction and really kind of bring back the enthusiasts. Now, obviously, you guys kind of see where I'm leaning towards and if I like it or not. That may completely change uh, if I ever get a chance to drive one. Even though it has a three horsepower gain, um, it's not all about numbers. It's honestly how the power is delivered. It's how the power feels. It's how the entire you know balance of the car feels as well. Um, the entire chassis supposedly is you know reworked and changed and everything, so it handles a lot better which is definitely a right step in the right direction. Obviously, they got the new motor in as well. So I'm really curious. I would obviously love to drive one, love to feel one out and just see what it's all about. Um, but the overall looks, it's, it's, it's going to take some time for me to get, not necessarily over it, but get used to it. Now, I am sure, I am 100% sure of it. People are hating it right now, which we all know. Uh, but I guarantee you, as soon as people start seeing this car lowered on proper wheels, you know, just really nicely modified. I guarantee you people are going to start liking them um, because I'm telling you, once people start doing that kind of stuff, it really, really changes the look of the car and you can really see, you know, the aggression um, that the car actually has. Um, even with this car, 
it's stock on stock wheels at the stock height. It looks pretty puny. Um, it looks a little, you know, dinky to me. Uh, and then once you lower it and put it on wheels, it really, really gets aggressive. It takes a whole other turn for how the car looks and everything. Um, so I know it's going to be the same thing with that. Uh, so I'm, I'm very curious to kind of see where that goes and where aftermarket goes. Now, let's talk about the STI real quick. Obviously, we don't know much information about it, uh, but there has been rumors that it's going to be 400 horsepower um, and a pretty, pretty serious car. Now, after the WRX has debuted and you can see the styling cues and everything, um, I'm not holding my breath about that 400 mark. I think it's going to be much lower. I think it's going to be around the 350 to 365 mark. Um, which is a nice improvement, but not a big enough improvement for me to really consider one, at least at this point. To me, honestly, they really need that 400 number to compete with today's cars and kind of the competition that the STI goes against. Um, so if they can get to that point or, you know, and that's what the numbers are going to be, I will be impressed and I definitely will take a harder look at it. Um, but considering seeing the number change and what's on paper for the WRX, I really don't see that happening. That's just my opinion. Uh, but then again, tuning companies and, you know, the capabilities of the motor, I think is going to be a lot easier to make power and a lot safer and a lot more fun. <laughs> so it, it'll be an interesting ride to see what happens with it. Now, there has been one render going around, a recent render after the WRX has debuted of the STI. It's not actually what it is, but somebody made a render of it. Um, I'll actually put it up on the screen for you guys. Uh, it actually looks pretty good. Um, and the main reason for that is because it's lowered and that all that plastic cladding around the car is painted or paint matched to the car. And, um, I obviously has the STI wing on the back and everything, but it looks pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Um, you know, and that's just kind of going back to my point of saying, you know, all you need to do is lower it, put some proper wheels on it, you know, and obviously do something about that plastic on the sides. And I think you'll have a pretty good looking car. Um, now I, you know, who knows what's going to happen with the STI it may be totally different. I don't think it will be. I mean, if you look at the current and previous generations of the WRX and STI, they literally look exactly the same. Um, you know, one of the obviously main differences that you can tell, which is, which is from the wing. Um, so I really don't see it looking that much different uh, in terms of overall cosmetic and aesthetics. Now I found in this generation, a lot more people went for the WRX uh, than for the STI. I mean, I get it, it was a newer motor and everything, um, but that was simply because people didn't see the you know difference in value. They saw that the WRX as a better bang for your buck, uh, which in terms of going for more power and you know modifying, it was, you didn't really have to do too much in terms of cost to gain more power. Uh, but we, I mean, everybody knows if you've driven STI, it's just, it's a completely different car in terms of driving dynamics and the, and the experience and everything. It's way different. Uh, but I'm really, 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 really hoping uh, that the STI of this generation has a bigger gap between the WRX and STI. What I mean by that is obviously the power, if, you know, if the WRX is 271 and the STI is 400 horsepower, that is what I'm talking about. Like that kind of gap. Um, and even something, you know, changing the looks of it where they paint the actual plastic and they make it a little bit more aggressive in terms of the looks. They make a little bit wider fenders, you know, something something that really makes it stand out and say like, you know, there's no mistake like, oh, that's an STI. You know, that's not a WRX. That's 100% an STI coming down the road. And that's what I'm hoping for. I'm really, I really want to see that gap between the two that, you know, there really is a reason for that giant price gap. Um, so we shall see what happens with the STI. Yes, I will be keeping my eye on it, uh, to see what happens. But for right now, the WRX just didn't wow me. Um, I, it's, it's really, uh, sad to see just how many negative comments, uh, on the WRX after it debuted. Uh, I, it's honestly, I haven't, I maybe have come across one or two positive comments on it. Um, you know, and that's, you know, obviously that's just like what I mentioned earlier about people just jumping on the bandwagon and just, you know, fear of change and everything. I'm not saying that I like it. I'm not saying that I, I hate it or anything, but, um, you know, I will say that it really isn't my thing currently and I will hold my judgment until I actually drive one and see one in person. I know a lot of people that went to Wicked Big Meat this past weekend. Um, they saw the car in person and everybody that saw it, every, every single post that they were saying it, they said it looks a lot better in person. It's not as bad as I thought. I saw so many people and so many comments, uh, about, you know, that exact same thing. So I know the next question that I'm going to get is, should I buy this generation or should I wait for the new STI? 
that is entirely up to you. I can't make that decision for you. I honestly think the new STI is going to be pretty awesome in terms of just overall package. It's going to be a pretty sweet car. The numbers, I don't know what it's going to be. Obviously, we have an idea of what it's going to kind of look like. So you're going to have to make that judgment yourself if you want to wait. Uh, personally, I don't think I'm going to be making the jump as of right now. You know, I'm really, really happy with my current generation STI. I really don't see myself jumping ship just yet. Plus, I would never buy a first model year car, especially with a new motor. Um, that is something that I've always practiced and I don't think I'll ever do. Um, mainly because there's always so many kinks and things that they work out. And plus a few years down the line, they always do a refresh, which is always the better looking version of that generation. Um, so I would probably be, a, be at least three to four years out before I would even consider buying the new generation STI. And obviously that can change if it's like completely awesome and it's one of the best cars that has come out in the past five years. You know, maybe I would make a, a consideration for it and really start, you know, focusing on trying to get one. After seeing the WX, there wasn't a huge excitement about it. Um, so it really, really didn't make me want to make the jump just yet. So that is my initial thoughts on the WRX. Um, you know, I wish it was a little bit better. I wish I had some, a little bit more excitement and uh, positive feedback and opinion on it. Um, but just, you know, seeing the release pictures and everything and everybody, uh, you know, all the different angles and all that stuff of people have posted. I'm not too excited about it. And the numbers on the paper, at least for the WRX is, uh, you know, it's questionable. Uh, but we will see. We'll see what the STI holds. I'm, I will be keeping my eye very close on it to see what they do. Um, and who knows, maybe we'll have a 2022 STI in the garage uh, by next year once they kind of come out. So we will see. I don't know. But for now, I'm happy with my EJ. I'm happy with my 2017. And yeah, that answers all the questions I've been getting uh, if I am interested or what I think of the new WRX. So if you guys have any questions at all about the new WRX or my current STI, please feel free to ask the questions below. I'll be more than happy to answer. But in the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple, and I'll catch you in the next one.